Hello, me, um, Guitar Summit again, and I'm at Le Tundler, as they call him in France. Um, at, I'm at Jörg Tundler's booth with Tundler guitars. Uh, Jörg's voice is uh, not working. Also, he doesn't want to talk to me. We've talked in the hotel bar for hours. He's done talking to me. I'm going to talk about him. Now, Jörg is, as we in the business call, difficult. He's very opinionated. He uh, likes, like me, to realistically critique things. Also say bitch about stuff on a high level. The thing with Jörg Tundler, though, is no one's taking it uh, uh, personally because he knows his shit, which is why he can just sit there like the ass he is and just nod because once you've played one of these for about 10 seconds, you know that everything he says even though he says it rudely, is very right. The guy just knows his shit. People come to him and ask him. I mean, he is, he is in German, as we say, a koryphäer. We say this in German. He, in English, you say he knows his shit. He's, as Fender would call him, a master builder. I'd call him a master beta, but he's a master builder. He's just damn good at shit. Now, uh, that good at shit comes at a price. Something like this will run you about 6k, but holy, it never, let's do it this way. If you don't have the money, never ever play a Tundler guitar because it's going to ruin you for the rest of all the other brands. It's ruined me. Of course, in the Les Paul shootout, I liked an R8 from Gibson, absolutely. You know what I did after I really fell in love with that R8 from Gibson? I wrote to Jörg and said, hey Jörg, we need to talk because I need one of your guitars. I didn't write to Gibson because I knew Jörg could do that guitar just better even better than it absolutely was i don't know what faces he's making back there robin is he making any faces it's true so i don't know if i could ever find a deal or offer him anything that would afford me the luxury of having these in my house i could of course lick it now then he would probably jump up and kill me um but i played three toddler guitars so far and i wake up at night bathed in sweat, yelling out his name. Yuck! It happens. Um, oh, on this one, I'm going to touch it. You can see that he actually stripped the paint off this neck, which I love. Of course, on, a, on an LP style guitar, you have to feel the nitro and all that, but that's neat. Is that something a customer wanted? Customer request fulfilled. Um, these just feel like really old friends. Which probably York doesn't have a lot of, because he's an ass. But he builds amazing guitars. So he has to build his own old friends. <laughs> he's going to so kill me. <laughs> um, this is a beautiful gold top. Oh my God. Price point on this? Yeah, yeah, mach, mach, mach dein Ding. I just said he doesn't have old friends and there, there he goes, there's old friends. Okay, I lied. Um, God, this is... Oh, look at... The, Colin? Uh, Colin? Robin. Your name is Robin, right? Oh, I, I so insulted you by calling you Colin because, you know, that freaking little Irish leprechaun. Who would want to be associated with Colin? Um, did you get the beautiful crackies? And... Um, Look at these Grover tuners with huge weedy things. Wait, I got to lift it up. I fall in love with them. I guess they are doing the hip shot tuners. Look at this. Uh, uh, the big ass wheel. Yeah. It, it they, looks hip shotty, and um, they, I think that the headstock so, is beautiful. So creamy. And Without I, any uh, uh, dead spots. Dead spots. I love how the headstock is really small and subtle. I mean, it's so tough to do a headstock that works, especially on something so iconic as a Les Paul. And I think this does work. I think it is smaller. Um, I love the size of the, uh, the machine heads here. Everything is done, I'm sorry to say, to perfection. I don't want to rub it in more. He already knows he's good. Of course, he makes amazing acoustic guitars. I don't even want to know price point on this. 7k a small car 
the basic version uh, is uh, from uh, 300 3500 uh, 3, onwards okay so this one has like i don't know it's just because of the sunburst finish in the archback it's more expensive than the basic version the basic version is uh, a plain arched uh, back made from solid woods like uh, rosewood or koa or something uh, but here you have the the uh, Arch top, arch back. Yeah, I mean, who can? And who cares about the sunburst? If I can save money, fuck the sunburst. Yeah, the yeah. sunburst is an awful lot of work on this one. Yeah, I would get it without it and then save a lot of money. And then we have strats, which of course people absolutely rave about. Um, I said strats, of course he can't, but I can. Those are strats. It, they just say in as fucking big as he can possibly put it on the headstock. I mean, look at that fucking ego of that man, okay? So, this is how big the headstock is, and every single millimeter has been used to say, Tandler! Huh? I mean, that's ego right there. That's not understatement. That's, that is statement. You didn't get the idea. I didn't get the idea? No, no, no. It's just that you, that you have to see it from about 50 meters that it's not a blah, blah, blah guitar. Ah, it so makes sense. Yes, yes, yeah. it, it says not Tandler, it says Tandler. It's like Tandler! Huh? Yeah, it, it's the ball grabby kind of headstock. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, Stephen Tyler's. Uh, Stephen Tyler guitars, James yeah. Tyler's. You, you recognize that from a mile I, away. I love them. I love them. It's a statement. It's a statement. And you see that it's not a. In talking about headstock statements, you guys know what other company has a very clear headstock statement, okay? We, they're buddies, they're from Israel, and they make a statement. And you, Quentin James, might not like it, but screw you. I love you and your little birdie. He, he, Quentin has a little birdie. Okay, he does. Um, <coughs> and while we're here, coughing, we'll talk to this man. Who doesn't even make guitars? No. How lame is that? Come on. My name is Kunz. And, and I, you don't make guitars? I, not at all. I only play. Play guitar and bass. What do you play your guitars through? Uh, through my cabinets, for sure. Whoa, look at that. He yeah. is a cabinet maker. And not kitchen cabinets, but... God, I'm so not funny. In case you're wondering, I know I'm not funny. But kitchen cabinets is also kind of my business, but not my business here today. Ah. It's not a story. We are here for guitar and bass cabinets. Which are very... Whoa! Dude, that is one of the wrongest and rightest things I've ever seen. That is just... How stoned were you when you came up with that? Uh, it was a wish from my wife. I had no chance to... Get... <laughs> he, I can't talk more. This is the cabinet pussy whipped edition. But it is beautiful. I mean, do they do they jingle when you play? Uh, if you have a very very good ear, yes. But uh, no, I mean, do do, do, they, do they move when you play? They move, sure. You play loud enough, man. That is awesome. I have to say that that is actually very cool. I'm sorry to say, and and it matches the the beautiful snaky fake fake purple. Is it purple? Snaky skin, not snaky, uh, croc skin, alligator skin. This is absolutely gorgeous. Ah, and it's not a cap, it's an amp. This is a modification. It's a, the inside is a Fender Pro Junior, which is a very good amp. Yes, it is. Wonderful amp. And, and with a 10-inch speaker in the, in the stuck head, it's a little hard, a little bad. You don't really like to play it in the band. So this is a bigger cabinet with a 12 inch speaker in it so that the amp has more space and I put in um, <coughs> Celestion Cream which fits very very well very good pedal amp yeah of course it is yeah. yes loud enough for almost every kick club kick uh, that is that is a very unique and awesome design and um, let's show some more stuff here you have green marshals because of course you need that and big ass ones that no one can carry? Full stack is full stack, it's a bass monster. It's my private stack. 
for uh, frightening the people, <laughs> frightening the the, uh, the audience, the audience, but not also and the neighbors, uh, and the neighbors at all. Yes. Then we have black, slightly angled, which is cool. Uh, we have what are we? What do we have here? We have a double kind of a thing. A it's split in the middle. Yeah. It, ah, it's an open back, open back, closed back. It's almost as if I now recognize it. It's specially designed with my buddy Tantler. In uh, he, he, so, he, so what you're saying is he has friends. We are friends. We are good friends. He's my bass player. He's my guitar player. Ah, so you're not friends, you're bandmates. That, there's a big difference between friends and bandmates, okay? Okay. So you see, yeah. Jörg says they're both. Well, I think both. <laughs> yeah. Not always. I'm just pulling no. Jörg's leg, okay, we're friends, he's okay with that. Don't go like, why is he so rude to this nice old man? <laughs> he's a nice guy. Yes, he is. Let me try to, to explain this to you. Yeah. Go right ahead. We explain get... it to them. Here, you take right. this. Hello. Uh, we always Jörg. noticed a problem with 2x12 two by, two by cabinets in the past. The cabinets that you could buy actually didn't work properly or they were sounding very thin very thin compared to a 4 by 12 cabinet or a 1 by 12 cabinet so we designed this cabinet together it's got two different kind of speakers one speaker which uh, is able to transport a lot of bass and is very clear sounding like let's say a uh, Celestian 100 watt and the other is a mid-rangey sounding more vintage style let's say cannabis rex uh, cannabis cone speaker uh, and to combine those without having phasing problems there's a I don't know what it's called in English a wall yeah a wall inside uh, so it's actually two 1 by 12 cabinets. The one is closed. This is the one with the uh, with the clear bass speaker, and the other one is the more in the mid-range operating one. You could use different kind of speakers. Others will work there too. Uh, you could use, uh, for example, a Weber or a. Uh, Gibt's noch? <laughs> or a tone tubby? Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, a Chinese made vintage 30, right? No, vintage 30 doesn't work at all. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm just trolling him, I don't know. I, I don't <laughs> like them, they're they uh, too much upper mid range and big, 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 glassy. But of sounding. course, you would need uh, two mics to mic, two mics to mic this. I, I want, yeah, you need two, not, you don't need two mics. If you if you're using like a, a cannabis Rex, what he does here, that this one is good if you only have one microphone or one channel on your okay. on your okay. live mixing console or something. This will work. These are the frequencies the guitar is made for. Uh, but if you wanna wanna have the full sonic, uh, if you buy this, you wanna mic it with two mics. I mean, yeah, you really I mean, want it's to. it's your monitor cabinet yeah, yeah. on stage if you're playing wave amplifiers. At, at a probably higher level uh, and not like any digital or in-ear situation. Yeah, we're, not, we're, classic, classic, we're not doing digital anyway. Classic rock and roll stage situation. This, this cabinet is made for and you will notice that you even don't have to play that loud with this cabinet because you hear yourself much better than with any other cabinet and it doesn't, it does have a lot of bass which 2 by 12s which is easy transportable. It doesn't weigh anything. It's made out of poplar. It, it's, you can carry it with your small finger here. It's lightweight and... Uh, well, that just means that we're going to have to hear it. That means that Mr. Kunz has to come to the got, studio and we actually have to do some tests with mics and actually do that. How about that? Cool. You come over, yeah. we'll throw that on the floor and we'll do some things. It does even have a version where you can uh, port the, the opening. Bag. It's a convertible back. This is a fixed opening. It's... Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he has a fixed opening. 
what you were thinking about. No, nothing. <laughs> I'm, we're talking about speakers. <laughs> no, it's a 30%, which is... Well. <laughs> Stage sliding. Deal with it. Thank you. I'm not used to that. <laughs> No, well, you were talking about open the up, open back there. Yeah, yeah. And then you have a close back or something. But it's meant like that. You got one one twelve is, is close, the other is like on an open combo amplifier. And this is this is extremely good for, for the projection. So mm -hmm. you you stand in besides your cabinet and you it's almost as loud as when you stand in front of it. Okay. Yeah. And here we have uh, barn doors. This is a convertible back. Vario back uh, for uh, having a little more control and variation in the sound. With the 1x12, if you have the close back, you know it's even more centered, it's a little more compressed the sound, like all close backs. And if you are standing in a practice room or in a small club and it's uh, way too sharp, you can open the back, it gets a little more bottom, mm -hmm. not more bass, just a little more bottom and a little more headroom, and uh, the room. It's richer, it's got more headroom, and you can hear it more around the room. So realistically, would someone need both? Would someone not say, I like open back, I like close back, I buy that, I always have that? When people have this, do they actually switch back and forth? Yes, they do, because you can switch it in the way, how far you open it, mm -hmm. and, you, and you change with this the, the, uh, the part of the base. Okay, okay. There are also some... And uh, depending on the speaker. Depending on the speaker, the sound of the cabinet can actually change dramatically if you open or close it. Not with every speaker. It, uh, some uh, certain speakers and the cabinet does sound totally different if you open it up. Well, that means you have to bring that one too and we have to make a video about this one too. Because okay. now I want to know. Because you can tell me whatever the fuck you want and I have to believe you, but we don't, we're not hearing it here. We can't make it here. I want to hear that. So, you can... So you come by and we'll do that. Deal? Deal. Deal. We're going, we're off. Tandler, Kunz, apparently they like each other. So they say, um, thanks for watching Guitar Summit 19, 18, 18, what is it? 18? 18. Uh, animals at the end.